Imagine how your world would be like if you could gain freedom from fear. For the past 13 years, I have been focusing my efforts on three major goals. Overcome my fear of public speaking. Win the world championship of public speaking. Help others to overcome their fears and go beyond perceived limitations to become better speakers, leaders and influencers. Fortunately, I was able to achieve all three goals. I overcame my fear of public speaking. I won the world championship of public speaking. And I continue to share my learnings about leadership and human behavior through my books, coaching and mentoring. This has helped me to connect with people from over 100 countries. After interacting with such diverse groups of people at a deeper level, I realized that nobody has a fear of public speaking. What most people have is a fear of public shaming. We want to be praised and validated but we are afraid to look bad. We want to change the world, but we are afraid to change ourselves. We want to project our perfect self, but we are afraid to reveal our real self. Where is that fear coming from? What I have discovered is this. The fundamental thing that holds us back is not fear. What really holds us back is our ego. Yes, our ego. We tend to avoid situations that can hurt our ego. Ego is the root cause of the fear that stops you from being the best you can be. It's a hard truth to accept because we do not want anyone to talk about our ego and fears. That's a problem we need to solve today with you, for you and for all of us because your fear might be hurting our world. How can your fear hurt our world? If you want to solve any major problem, you need to first take the initiative to get up, speak up and mobilize others. That initial enthusiasm is almost always immediately stalled by fear. What if I'm wrong? What if I fail? What if I become a laughing stock in front of others? That perspective of I versus others is the stumbling block where our best ideas die. If more people just think about themselves and withhold their contribution, it hurts all of us. When I looked at the list of speakers here today, I wondered, are these speakers the only ones who have the best ideas? Could there be someone in the audience who have ideas to share? Do you have ideas that you do not care to share? Or do you fear to share what you really care about? When you look around the world, you can see there are a lot of competent people who lack confidence. And then there are a lot of confident people who lack competence. I often wonder, what if we could help more competent people to become more confident, eloquent and influential? How would that change our world? Today, with the immense reach of modern channels of communication, we now have the unique power to gain massive global influence and rouse people to banish all problems or to banish all people. Now we have even more opportunities to unite more people to solve problems or to divide more people to create new problems. You see, when the right ideas do not get the required attention due to mass indifference and silence, undesirable ideas will continue to win through the power of mass influence and hurts all of us. It's no longer about how fearful you are. It's about how free you want to be. Then there is a popular misconception. Many people think that the fear of public speaking is caused by the speaker's 
separation from the group. Their argument is that we as humans want to be part of a group. We fear standing alone, separated from the group. What I realize is that the real cause is just the opposite. The fear is caused not so much by our separation from the group, but by our illusion of separation. We fail to see that we too are part of the crowd. This illusion of separation prevents us from seeing the interconnected destinies of our listeners and us. As long as we do not shift the thinking from what is in it for me to what is in it for us, fear will prevail. Now you might be asking, but what can I do? How can I gain freedom from my fear of speaking up? Imagine your public speaking journey as having three distinct milestone. The first milestone is called me. When you are at the me milestone, you're always worried about yourself. How do I look? What about my hairstyle? What would others think of me? Most people will not go beyond this milestone. They will avoid public speaking for their entire lives because they're so worried about themselves and their image. Then there is this second milestone. It's called message. Now you have learned all the techniques. But you still want to say something amazing and outstanding. You are constrained by thoughts like, how can I do better than the other speakers? How will I impress my audience? You are still concerned about falling below expectations. Your ego still has a grip on you. After the milestones of me and message, there is a third milestone. Here you have gone beyond your ego. No comparison, no inadequacy, no fear. Now you can connect with your listeners better. What is this third milestone? It's messenger. As a messenger, you're not trying to build yourself up. You're not even trying to build your message up. You share what you learned because your care goes beyond yourself. If you look throughout history, you can find leaders, philosophers, prophets, experts, speakers, all the leaders we admire appear as messengers. For our shared benefit, they share what they learned with all the passion they have. Because messengers know that when they care better, they connect better. Once you become the messenger, you have made the transition from what is in it for me to what is in it for them to what is in it for us. Then an amazing thing happens. You will find that you are no longer alone. You will find that there are many other people who believe in the value of your ideas, who begin to come out of the shadows to join your mission, to be part of something greater, to look up to you as the leader who can guide them further. That's how most leaders emerge. Now you might be asking, but how can I become the perfect speaker and perfect leader liked by everyone? My friend, you have asked the right person. Based on my experience coaching people from around the world, from different walks of life, I can tell you the one thing you need to do to become perfect. Accept that you will never become perfect in the eyes of everyone. No matter how great you are, there will always be someone who might not like you. That's fine. Throughout history, you can find leaders who were admired and ridiculed at the same time by different people. What is their secret? They developed the courage to be disliked for the cause they believe in. As they continue to learn more, discover more and progress more. They seek progression, not perfection. Seeking perfection stalls your progression. 
the more you can let go of your ego, the higher you can go. Imagine what it would be like to wake up one day to speak up without the fear of rejection or imperfection and discover the supporters for your ideas. It's time to stop the pursuit of perfection. It's time to stop the illusion of separation. It's time to stop allowing weaker ideas to win. With that mindset, you can grow from fear to familiarity to freedom. I know a gentleman named Rajesh. Rajesh was a participant in one of our online courses. He is a senior executive who has great ideas, but he was afraid to share it during high stakes meetings and regret it later. After we helped him to develop the confidence to speak under any situation, he invented a surprising new habit. Now, when he is held up in the traffic jam, he practices his public speaking skills on imaginary topics and ideas. When people give him odd looks, he continues to speak, looking at them. Rajesh says, Manoj, I am making up for the lost time and staying ready for my next opportunity. People like Rajesh are proof that you can start with an audience of none. Then progress to an audience of one. It could be a friend, mentor or coach who can see you for who you are and who you could be. You might make mistakes. You might say the wrong word. You might even be at a loss for words. I still remember the first time I was invited to speak up. I was 13 years old at a summer camp. On the final day, the camp leader said, before you collect your certificates, I want each one of you to come to the front of the class and share with us what you want to become in life. I realized that this was my last chance to impress more girls. One by one, students came up to the front and started to share their dreams. Soon it was my turn. I stepped to the front, faced the crowd, and I started with a pregnant pause. Then I continued with a pause. All the girls started to lean forward. Oh, they are thinking I'm going to say something profound. I can hear my friends in the front row saying, my don't speak up. I can hear my camp leader saying, Say something. So I leaned forward, hoping that the words could just drool out of my mouth. I stood there, staring at the audience for five minutes without saying a single word. The camp leader didn't want to prolong her suffering. She goes, here is your certificate. Guess what I did after that? You guessed it right. I paused. I paused speaking up in front of large groups for many long years, two decades. Then one day I realized the only mistake you can make is to be afraid to make more mistakes. Don't stop. Only by letting go of my ego and going beyond my past mistakes was I able to grow more and help more people. I have been fortunate to be part of the journeys of many good people who went beyond their fears to speak up and solve problems. From Anthony in Kenya who speaks passionately about stopping financial crimes in Africa. Christina in China who believes Asians need to be more assertive. Hidesh in India who helps people stop mediocrity. Sam in UK who helped new entrepreneurs to dream big and achieve more. Sheila in the Philippines who helped poor children to find a future through education. And countless other selfless unsung heroes. That's why we admire all the TED speakers here today 
and those around the world who speak up for what they believe in, even when they are filled with all kinds of worries, fears and doubts. You should share your ideas too. Not for you, but for us. The ideas you wonder about in your mind, whisper to a friend and hide from the crowd could be the one idea that could galvanize an audience. Loosen the grip of your ego and think beyond yourself. Realize that you have a responsibility to give birth to the ideas growing inside of you. Our world needs more competent people like you to become a force for good. If you can feel that calling, it's time to stop the fear that's stopping you. Get up. Get help if you need. Get out of the cage. Get onto the stage. Your ideas can benefit people who are born and who are yet to be born. Who are counting on you to speak up and lead us.